I got all 90 of my GCSEs and I remember when I was doing them I used to go on YouTube all the time and see how people got nines in English and maths but in this video I'm not just going to tell you the basic tips like start revising early and do past papers I'm going to tell you the shit that your teachers won't it's also getting a whole lot harder to get a nine because the UK government itself is literally cutting down on the top grades it's given out so I wish I had this video when I was first starting out my revision and I got straight A's at A level as well but I can pretty confidently say that I think I found GCSEs harder just because you've got so much to revise and because there's so many subjects you have to be clever about how you do things so in this video I'm going to be going through why you want to get nines general tips for every single subject then go through every specific subject in detail and the secrets I used before telling you guys my own self-made strategy for the actual day of the exam so firstly, why do you want to get nines? And the single biggest reason is to get into a good uni. I'm a student at the London School of Economics, one of the best unis in the UK. I'm going to the University of Chicago next year. And because I got the top grades at GCSE and set a pattern for myself at A-level and now at university, you understand how to tackle public exams. For a lot of you, it's probably the first set of proper exams that you've done. So you need to build that confidence in yourself and show yourself that you can actually perform well. And if you want to earn some money, doing one in GCSEs will set you out as a really good tutor if you could say to parents i got nines in every single subject then literally i remember i was getting paid like 25 pounds for an hour session as a 16 17 year old this is way better than working in a cafe where you get paid like 12 pounds you can double that just from doing well in your exams so now let's go on to the universal tips that you need to use when doing every single subject the single most important thing that literally no students do is look at the syllabus and specification of what you actually need to know and what's going to be asked about in the exam if you don't know what a syllabus is it's a list of topics throughout your course that shows you everything you should have been taught and everything you need to know the second can you look at it you'll realize that your teachers have taught you too much for me i had a history teacher who absolutely loved the subject he taught us the stuff that we needed to know on the spec but he also went into other stuff because he loved it so much and we're still writing down notes on this other material even though it's not going to be in the exam and if you haven't looked at the syllabus how the fuck to know what you actually need to spend your time revising if i could go back to my gcse's i genuinely look at this before i even started year 10 or whenever it is you start the course this way i'll be able to tell between what i should be writing down in my notes and what i should be revising from what's actually useless and isn't going to be asked about in the actual exam which is all that matters secondly reading these books is not revision doing the little questions they have and fun tasks is nothing like the real exam is and is a complete waste of time sure you can use the cgp books or whatever they're called to help assist you with your knowledge and help you to answer practice questions but just reading through them because they've got all the information in there. None of it is actually going to stick in your head. Instead, what you do need to be using is past papers and you need to do them in a specific way. For nine out of 10 subjects, this is the only way to revise in my experience. I didn't do any flashcards and I barely wrote any notes. I just got straight into past papers. You might think, how can I do this straight away? The trick is that I did my notes using papers. So for example, I'd get a question like this and answer it using my knowledge and notes this way you remember the stuff that's actually been asked about in exams and you also understand how to structure your answers better and for a six mark questions i'd write down six bullet points in shorthand form don't write out the whole answer and after a while once you've done a few past papers using your notes you'll be able to start doing them without them and you'll have that knowledge on your head of the topics that always come up and will probably come up in your final exam. This is exactly how you revise for a test. Also, you have to get into a library. It's gonna help you massively. If you're anything like me, and especially if you don't enjoy your subjects, or at least most of them, you're not gonna be able to revise at home. There's always something getting on at home, something as innocent as your mum knocking on your door and answering you a question. Very rarely can you lock in for an hour and a half to two hours. It's far too easy to go onto YouTube or grab your phone. But if you get into a library, a space where everyone is doing the work, especially if you can go to your school library, where everyone's revising for stuff like you, then you just enter this state of mind where you're like, all right, I should actually get my head down and get work done. And trust me, especially when you go early in the morning, the time just flies by. Another thing you can do is what's called cold testing. And this is using past papers straight away to understand what you need to revise. So as well as looking at the syllabus, you can try, let's say a maths paper, just from memory and see how you get on. 
when I first tried, I was probably getting like 50%, 60%, just because I couldn't remember how to do the harder questions. But from doing a test just out of nowhere, I could understand the topics that I was weaker on and the topics that I didn't need to revise because I was already getting the questions right. It's an easy way to see what you need to revise and to narrow down the amount of notes and revision you need to do. So now let's go through every single subject specifically. I'm going to start with history because this is an exam I got like 95% I think overall. For history I made absolutely no notes and this might be surprising to some of you who think history is all about dates and facts and figures. It is but plan the answers and include these figures there rather than making flashcards because otherwise there's so much material you're never going to remember all of it and it's very important to be clever when you're revising history because for the paper that isn't your sources I think you only need to remember either two or three topics properly so instead of revising all five or six topics that you've learned throughout the two years you only need to focus on three do not waste your time making notes on everything when it comes to the exam you only need to answer questions on two topics it just doesn't make any sense also history is very specific on exam technique for example I remember they had four markers where you absolutely have to make four different points, otherwise you're not getting all the marks. Make sure you're up to date with how to answer every single question. And with history, you can also kind of predict what might come up. Usually in history, the topics that have come up for an essay question the year before or two years before are less likely to come up this year. So look at the papers from 2023 and 2022. Okay, they've asked about the League of Nations in an essay question there. They're probably not gonna do it this year. Obviously this isn't 100% sure, but it's another way of sort of narrowing down and guiding what you revise because you cannot revise everything, otherwise you'll kill yourself. Now sources is a part of history that trip a lot of people up. You all know how to tackle them, see who's written them, see if they're biased or not accurate. But one thing that a lot of people don't mention with sources is the context around it. So what you already know about the League of Nations, you can use with a source about Clemenceau or Lloyd George. I use the A to B method when looking at any source. Who is saying something, to whom, why, and at what time slash in what context. If you can apply this method to every single source that you do, then you tick off what the examiners actually wanna see. Now let's talk about maths. You need to absolutely drown yourself in past papers. With maths, there's absolutely no point making notes, no matter who you are. Literally just spam practice questions in the same way, doing them open book at first and then moving on and seeing your percentage get higher and higher, then do it closed book. And with maths, the first half of each paper is pretty easy. So once you start getting 100% on the first 15 questions, I would advise that you only revise the harder questions. The questions that are last on a maths paper are the type of questions that separate students who get a nine from students who get a seven. So if if you're that one student that is concentrating on the harder questions rather than practicing entire papers that's how you separate yourself i remember i went through like six papers and just printed out the last page towards the end of my revision period and it's especially important to mark your papers see that your percentage is improving every single time and if one topic keeps tripping you up you can go into physics and maths tutor and find like specific worksheets around that one topic and just spam like eight questions until you really get it nailed down also, I didn't do this for any other subject, but for maths, YouTube videos are actually quite helpful, especially for those harder questions. If, if you can find a video on a GCSE paper that's going through it step by step, it's quite good how they break it down. It's a lot easier to understand than reading the maths mark scheme. Now, quickly with geography, it's quite similar to history, but I found it so boring. And I'll suggest leaving the subjects that you find boring to the last thing that you revise because I was in the swing of things already. So I kind of knew what I was doing. Geography is probably Probably worse than history because you have to revise I think pretty much every single topic for the exam to keep yourself safe but the most important things you need to remember are those like stats and facts for case studies if you don't have these and even write the best answer you'll literally get a five secondly you need to know the like formation processes off by heart so like the movement of tectonic plates use diagrams for these and make sure you know step by step you know step one step two step three in your notes the whole process of a tectonic plate moving or whatever the topics are and again properly understand the exam technique for geography because again they're very specific on it <laughs> now let's talk about languages everyone gets fucked in the listening exam so if you want to separate yourself and be the nine 
student and to be honest i didn't do this much and kind of got away with it do like at least three listening pass papers so on your own get your headphones in and go through some listening pass papers you'll find that the listening papers are, are really repetitive and the sort of words they use so be that one student that revises listening because i promise you no one else will but in general i'm not sure you should spend that time revising languages especially for the reading paper it's either you kind of know it or you don't. I suggest that you flip back through your notes and just remember sort of key terms. The only thing that you do need to revise properly is sort of impressive phrases for the writing exam and also the speaking exam as well. The top students use phrases that others won't. So I remember on the day of my exam, I had an A4 sheet of paper and all over it was just written like complicated French phrases. These are like good adjectives, like how to say like scintillating in French or like connectives and adverbs don't try to remember too many but just have an army of like five to ten impressive phrases that you can use in your writing and separate yourself and english was my best subject so i'm going to touch on literature language and also transactional writing because that's quite a unique part of it for language and literature the structure of your answers is probably the most important part you can know every single quote but structure your answer wrong and not do well. And especially in the language paper, all five questions have a very specific style that you need to write to. Your teachers should have taught you this, but there's loads of resources online. Also in the exam, don't be afraid to annotate. If you can get all your thoughts and the techniques that you remember down on the paper straight away, then you don't need to remember them at the end where you're writing your answer out. Also, you should try to remember the key themes from every single piece of writing that you do. And for literature, I did Mice and Men and I had A4 sheets on pretty much all the possible essay titles so i had plans with the three key points and supporting notes and quotes on themes like revenge and like sexuality but also on every single character like curly or whatever the other people called i forgot by now and for this supporting detail for each point i'd put this in shorthand form so for example, if I was saying that Curly's wife was wearing red, I'd just put wife red. This way it actually sticks in your head and you cut down how much you need to remember. Now for transactional writing, I got 100% numerous times. Do not over revise for this. Obviously you need to know the basic formats of how a letter or a report are written, but the rest of it is basically creative writing. I genuinely think that reading a couple of fiction books will help with this. Like. I didn't read much when I was 16, I was too busy playing Fortnite. But when I was a kid, I used to read all the time and you just pick up little phrases and ways of writing and a tone that makes you sound like you're actually writing fiction. Genuinely, I'm not bantering. I'd pick up like a Michael Walpurgo book or, or like an Enid Blyton book just read through it and just see what kind of phrases and structure they're using. Try and take that into your own work. Now the sciences, this was my worst subject naturally. I remember in like year nine, I was probably estimated like a six or something, but I actually ended up getting all nines and I got a prize for the best score in biology. For sciences especially, the syllabus slash specification is super important because sometimes you need to know certain experiments in chemistry that you've just completely forgotten about. And especially for biology and physics, I found that the past paper questions were quite repetitive. I even in the actual exam recognized stuff that I'd already done in past papers. So I'd make sure you're doing as much past questions as possible. And in the sciences, equations are super important. I think they make up about a quarter, if not a third of the physics exam. So make sure you're comfortable with not just remembering equations, but being able to like manipulate them. Something they'll also do is try to catch you out with different like weights and measurements. So instead of writing kilograms, they might put grams or milligrams and if you don't recognize this look out for these little tricks especially in physics and chemistry then obviously your whole answer and numbers will be messed up and you won't get the mark and what annoys me is that so many people for the sciences specifically use the cgp guides but there's way too much information in there again if you try to revise everything in biology you're not going to do well and for this reason i know i said no flashcards but for science only you can use the physics and math tutor flashcards they're pretty much gone Oddly. Now let's talk about how you should schedule your revision. What you absolutely must do is to do the subjects you enjoy first. For a lot of you, you will probably say you don't enjoy subjects that much, but for me, I had one subject I really enjoyed, which was history. I did that first. Once you get into the swing of revision, it's a lot easier to start the others. And when I was revising, I didn't make it my entire life. I tried to get into like a coffee shop or a library ideally, but after noon, I'd live like a normal person. So I'd get up early, let's say eight, maybe even nine, 
and try and get three or four hours in the morning with a little break in between. And then after 12, I just relax. And I know that even though a lot of people will try and tell you, especially at GCSE, because of their first time doing proper exams, that they're revising every single day for eight hours, there's just no need and you'll burn out if you try and do it. Now this is what separates me even from other students that got nines. What I'm about to tell you is my secret strategy on the day of the exam. Now there's two things that I do. Number one, I have a secret sheet. I'm not taking a sheet into the exam hall, but what I make sure is that on the night before the exam and the morning of, I have maximum two pieces of paper. That is all I look at. I do not try and cram from all of my notes. Instead, I get the stuff that is the most important things to know. So for history, I had a few essay plans written down as well as some key dates. And I also have stuff that I can't remember. So again, for history, some dates or someone's name that I just can't get pinned down in my head. This way you don't overload your brain with all all the information that you've tried to cover but just the stuff that you actually need a recap on on the morning of the exam and here's the tip that i genuinely haven't seen any other student do in the first 15 minutes of every single exam i did at gcse i wouldn't write anything for the first 15 minutes i'd spent the first 15 minutes of each exam planning out all of my answers especially for subjects like english and history there's no way i'm going to remember all the facts that i have in my head for the entire two hours instead i flick through each question blurt down what i can remember and that way for the rest of the exam i'm basically on autopilot because i planned out every single question with my key points facts and figures that i can remember in my head i don't need to go back into my memory bank i just need to write out in full what's already in front of me do this before you start writing and the exam will fly by you're not gonna have a mind blank halfway through now this is what genuinely worked for me and there's no reason you shouldn't get all nines doing the same